favorite days of the year because one jelly beans and most importantly God pulled off the biggest miracle in history and he showed the world how to make peace peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument and on Easter we celebrate how God made peace with us they should call it peaster <laughs> Or maybe not. Anyway, you're probably thinking, why would God need to make peace with me? I mean, we're not in an argument. Well, that's a long story. A really long story. To answer that, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. It's like this. People, you get it? People, people, beep, 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 beep. People were really close to God. And then something happened something bad, and it separated God from the people. God's friendship with us was broken, and something had to be done. But don't worry, God had a plan, and you'll find out all about God's plan in today's story, the greatest story ever told, the story of Easter! Woo! Yeah, 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 Easter! Yeah, Easter! Jelly beans, God's plan. Okay, one more jelly bean. I gotta save these for later. Mm. One more. Mm, that one was popcorn flavored. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the entire Bible. 
In the beginning, God created a magnificent paradise, and everything in it was good. He created water and land and plants and trees and birds and fish and animals. And then, from the very dust of the earth, God created a man called Adam. He created a woman called Eve. They were the first two people on earth, made in God's image, living peacefully in paradise. Adam and Eve were friends with God, but then they made a terrible choice. God had given Adam and Eve one rule. You must not eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you will certainly die. But the temptation was too great for Adam and Eve. They broke God's rule and what was once a paradise became a broken world. People started telling lies. It was the woman you put here with me. She made me eat it. Brother fought against brother. Ah! No! Selfishness spread through generations. When there had been peace in the garden, now there was pain and sin and death separating people from their creator. But God had a plan to make peace once again with the people he loved so much. Hundreds of years after Adam and Eve broke his rule, God chose a man named Abraham and said, All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Look up at the sky. Count the stars if you can. That's how many children will be born into your family. So Abraham had a son, Isaac, and Isaac grew up to have two sons of his own, Jacob and Esau. And those two sons had children of their own. Jacob, who God renamed Israel, he himself had 12 sons. So God had given Abraham a huge family just like he promised. But God's people, the Israelites, were still lost and broken, separated from him. They still did not have peace. They didn't have peace when God rescued them from slavery in Egypt, when God led them through the Red Sea to escape their enemies. Okay, great. But what are we supposed to eat out here in the desert? <laughs> Sand? <laughs> The nation of Israel didn't have peace when God gave them a new law. These commandments are hard. We want a king like all the other nations. They didn't even get peace when God gave them a king. The king's laws are no fair. We want a new God like all the other nations. Nope, nothing gave God's people lasting peace. They were still lost and broken and separated from God for thousands of years. But. God had not forgotten the promise he made to Abraham. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God still had a plan to show the people just how much he cared for them. He knew this broken world would never be able to rescue itself, so God made a way. God sent his son, Jesus, to bring peace on earth once and for all. Jesus grew up and he taught people love and compassion, forgiveness and grace. He healed the sick and befriended the outcasts. He saw what was wrong and made it right. He loved the world and its people so deeply he gave his life on a cross to pay for the sins of the whole world. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. In Colossians, the Apostle Paul tells us God made peace through Christ's blood, through his death on the cross. When Jesus chose to give up his life, he paid the cost of every sin ever committed and every sin that had yet to be committed. People no longer had to be separated from God. But in the three dark days immediately following Jesus' death, his followers didn't understand all of that yet. They huddled in the dark, afraid that they too might be arrested or even killed. Who's there? Early on the morning of the third day, Mary Magdalene arrived at the home where the disciples were staying. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. The disciples stared at each other in shock. Then, Peter and John lunged for the door. They raced each other all the way back to the tomb where Jesus had been placed. The tomb really is empty. There are the linen cloths they wrapped him in. Peter and John returned home, still uncertain and confused. And Mary Magdalene, who had followed them, stayed behind in the garden. And as she wept, she noticed a man standing nearby. And at first, she thought he was the gardener. Sir, did you carry Jesus away? Tell me where you put him. Mary. The instant the man spoke, Mary Magdalene knew immediately who he was. 
It was Jesus, alive again. Teacher. Overjoyed, Mary returned to the disciples to share the incredible news. I have seen the Lord. It was true. Jesus had come back from the dead. He's more powerful than sin, more powerful than death. And through him, we can have peace with God and work toward peace with others as God intended from the very beginning. So it's like this. All of history, every moment of God's story led up to the life, death, and resurrection of God's Son, Jesus. Sin separated people from God. That was a problem that we couldn't fix. So God sent His Son, Jesus. And after Jesus' death, He beat sin. And after that, He beat death itself. So I guess you could say that Jesus was kind of like a bridge between people and God. That made it possible for us to reconnect with God. The Apostle Paul once wrote, God was pleased to bring all things back to himself. God made peace through Christ's blood by his death on the cross. Because of Jesus, we can be close to God again. We're at peace. Jesus is alive and he's made a bridge that will last forever. So. Here's the one thing to remember today. God made peace with us. Remember that this Easter. Remember that every day. Really think about what Jesus did for you and tell God how grateful you are and don't just keep it to yourself either. Share the peace of God with others by telling them about Jesus or by loving them like Jesus loves us. I'll see you next time. Happy Easter, friends. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. So glad to be with you today as we celebrate the joy that this day brings. Not because of the Easter eggs and the delicious food, although these things are all an awful lot of fun and bring joy too. But the ultimate joy comes because Jesus is alive. Because God loved us so much that he sent his only son to die for us, only to be raised again from the dead three days later to prove that Jesus is more powerful than sin or death or the grave. And that God loved us so much that he would make peace with us through Jesus. I don't know about you all, but some of my favorite books and stories and movies are the ones that have a remarkable, amazing twist that you didn't see coming. And I think that's why they call this the greatest, greatest story ever told. Because we saw what Jesus went through on that Good Friday that it might sound a little funny that we would call the day that Jesus died Good Friday, right? But when we see how the story ended, how Jesus came back to life. He rose again on that third day. And because of what he did for us, nothing can ever separate us from God. We see how that day could possibly be called Good Friday. And yet no day has more joy than this day, Easter Sunday, when we get to say he is risen. Jesus is risen indeed. And because he is, he lives in each and every one of us. And we have a peace like no other. And we get to live knowing that we have a God that we can never be separated from. That we have a Savior in Jesus who loves us more than anything and who lives in us. And we have the opportunity to share the peace that comes with that with others so that they can know that peace and the joy that comes in knowing Jesus and knowing how much we are loved by him and by God, our heavenly father. And so today, whatever you do with your family, as you enjoy a meal together, as you enjoy some time with candy and eggs, take an extra minute to say, thank you, God, 
Thank you for loving us this much. Thank you, Jesus, for being willing to, to die for us. Thank you that you are alive again and live inside us. And let's take a minute now to say that together as we go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are amazing. Thank you for making peace with us from taking our sins away to, to having Jesus come to save us, to, to seeing Jesus overcome death and the grave. Thank you for your love and for working your amazing and perfect plan so that we can always be close to you. Lord God, as we go about our day, we're going to be doing so many different fun things, and we thank you for that, and we know you want us to have fun in all that we do, but we also want you to know that we want to take a few extra minutes in the midst of it all today to let you know how much we are grateful. We want to say thank you for loving us this much. Thank you for sending us Jesus. Thank you that he is stronger than our sins, that he's stronger than death or any grave. Thank you for sending us this amazing gift of Jesus. Lord God, I ask you to bless these families as they go about their day. Be with them in all that they do. May it be an amazing time to maybe even reconnect with some folks that they haven't in a while. And whatever we do this day, Lord, may we do it with a joy that only comes in knowing you and a peace that only comes in knowing that we are saved and that we are connected to you forever and nothing can ever take that away. And because this is the most amazing news ever, Lord, and the most amazing story ever told, may we share it with others every chance we get. Not keep it to ourselves, but share the joy and the peace that only comes from and through you with the other people in our lives who really need to know it because they deserve to have that peace and to know how much you love them too. Lord God, all of these things we ask in the name of our risen Lord Jesus, the one who taught us to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Go and live in that joy today. We can't wait to see you soon. Until then, have a blessed Easter. Take care, friends. Bye-bye.